Welcome to the second installment of the SHC Logistics Work Methods training videos. In this module, we'll be teaching the fundamentals and required methods for order fill operations. Work Methods is a prescriptive training process to tell and show you the best techniques and methods to accomplish your work. We're a company still merging our diverse freight handling methods, unique cultures, and different processes to accomplish our daily work. It is imperative to meet current economic challenges that we align and bring consistency in how we manage our operations. We've produced this video series to ensure the alignment of our processes and work. This investment in training, which touches each associate, will improve our business results through balance execution, focusing on labor by working smarter, reducing touches, which results in productivity improvements. Safety, each one of us working safely to protect ourselves and each other. Inventory, handling inventory discrepancies correctly. Quality, by making sure we pick the right location, the right item, and the right quantity every time. As the logistics operations team, our mission is to ensure we win in the marketplace by delivering great logistics solutions to our customers at the right cost. We can only accomplish our mission by maintaining our four strategic priorities. Performance accountability. Everyone owns our results. Each of us is accountable to learn and follow the prescribed work methods. Operations performance. We target best in class performance in all areas and following these work methods will get us to best in class performance. Customer. We will deliver great service and quality to our stores and customers. By following work methods, we can deliver consistent service and quality to our stores. People matter. We will engage, train, and coach our associates to exceed expectations. Each of you will learn the required work methods and thereby your DC will exceed expectations, doing better year after year. This is the beginning, not the end. We'll see more modules over time to address each functional area in your DC. This will give us a competitive advantage and continue to drive results that support Sears Holdings winning every day. We expect our results to get better from this training investment in each of you. In the end, your hard work and effort will be our competitive advantage and our survival depends on it. Thank you. Hi, Linda. Thanks for coming today to communicate your expert knowledge of the order filling process. I'm sure your years of experience will be really useful to the Work Methods Initiative. Yes, this is exciting, getting a chance to share what I know. Well, let's not waste any time. Let's get started. Case Pack Online Pick Function Codes 501 through 530. So moving over to Case Pack, let's observe Laura. She's a Case Pack order filler. She has 10 years with the company. As she walks to her assigned work area, she brings her supplies and a pro rep card with the start time, work center, and appropriate function code for this module filled out. Let's see. Yes, she has her tape, pick hook, safety blade, pen, pick apron, and a radio. Those are the tools she needs. First, she goes to the sign out desk to get the bundles of tickets for the batch. When she gets to the module, she'll sign out the labels online, and once complete, she gets started. In some cases, it may be necessary to sign out labels on the label sign-out sheet. She logs the bundle header so we have a record of the associate's assignments. Yes, and before she starts, she checks her bundle headers for the count of cases, then records the number on her pro rep cards. Next, she places the labels into the apron pocket and quickly walks to the starting point of the module. Aside from verifying she's at the correct location, she also matches the division and the item number from the label to the carton markings. You know, if we mispick and send the wrong product, we're not servicing our customers. Placing the label on the carton is done as one single motion. So she lifts her hand with the label and applies as she pulls the carton down. Label handling. Sometimes with heavier cartons, you can place the label on the carton as it sits in the bin and place it on the belt in one motion. Label one case at a time. 
Avoid folds, wrinkles, and tears in labels. No label overhang. Avoid placement on seams of case. Avoid label placement on key selling presentation or information. If the carton is dusty, dust and apply the label. Correct label placement guarantees that the carton diverts properly in shipping and that the store is properly charged. Any issues with poor labeling will result in additional handling for shipping. When you see stretch wrap or twine, remove it and throw it away in the receptacles. But keep moving forward. Don't go backwards to throw stuff away. Remember, clean as you go to provide a clean and safe environment. Is that still covered in the RE? You bet. Part of the process. Use your pick hooks to pull cartons forward. I've seen people try it other ways, but the safest way is the pick hook. Occasionally, pallets will jam at the flow rack, so there are pallet pull hooks spread throughout the module. For safety reasons, don't step onto the pallet flow area. If associate have any empty pallets, drop it off at the pallet return area. The associate doesn't throw away the backing? That's right. We take the label backings to the designated area for the supervisor to pick up. If the label doesn't stick because the carton is dusty, clean the carton. I know with the big fans, sometimes we get a lot of dust on cartons. Good point to drive home with other associates. Wow, Laura was really observant. See how she moves the carton around so she doesn't cover up something important on the box? Did it quickly, too. She's really keeping up the pace. And Laura is taping up a carton. If the box is slightly torn but the product isn't damaged, we will tape and go. What happens if the product is damaged? In that case, Laura will place the damaged product in a designated area and contact the supervisor at the end of the batch for disposition. Occasionally the belt goes down due to capacity constraints or mechanical issues. If it's a jam, associates clear the jam, if possible, and continue picking. And if the belt is still down, push the cartons close together, make more room, and keep loading the belt. We don't want to handle a carton more than once, so continue to pick until the belt is full. And if the belt is still not running after 10 minutes, call the supervisor for further instructions. Now is a good opportunity to address housekeeping and work on the module prep. In most cases, the conveyor starts and we can keep picking to the belt. The associate is at an empty location. Having the radio handy is a great idea. You can call the driver. Some places call the driver, others the supervisor. Either way, the call is made to get the replenishment to the location as soon as possible. And keep picking. Don't wait for the driver to deliver. See. The associate is keeping up a steady pace and continues on. The driver is there now, dropping off the cartons. The associate returns to the location and picks the cartons for the order. If for any reason the associate couldn't fill the ticket, then keep the ticket until the end of the pick assignment and place it on the designated area for a supervisor or a label control person to research. At the end of the batch, immediately following the last carton placed on the belt, the associate places the end of batch tote and calls the merge operator and supervisor, letting them know she has toted the module. Before the start of the next batch, go to the label sign out area to get the next bundle of labels. Yes, experienced associates will tell you to do this very quickly and go and get the next bundle and start picking. There isn't a lot of time between batches. Be quick, but don't hurry, like John Wooden said. Before starting the next batch, drop off the label backings for the supervisor to handle and pull out any hang-up labels and place them in the designated location. Well, if the associate has any hang-up labels, update the pro rep card with the final count of labels, minus the hang-up labels. Keys to working with a conveyor belt and case pack are place the carton on the center of the belt to prevent jams. Place cartons with labels facing up. Keep cartons in single layers, not multi-stacking on the belt. Place empty pellets corner to corner, runners down in the pellet return lane. Place cartons with the longest side parallel to the conveyor. Place the tote immediately after the last pick. Tote on time and make sure you understand the e-stop system. So if we had to list it out, the things an associate should focus on are... Work safely by never walking on the grating between the rollers. Be careful when bending into the slot so you don't hit your head. Don't step on pallets or rollers. Know the possible pinch points on the belts and don't forget, clean as you go. And quality is important too for our customers. We need to make sure we pick the right product every time by matching labels and division item numbers. 
Make sure we don't order fill damage cartons or damage freight as it comes into the building. If we damage or deface product, we impact our bottom line. When we mispick product, we not only impact store inventory, but open up the opportunity for a potential out at the store, creating lost sales. Our customer needs us to deliver on time exactly what they order. Productivity. Keep up a steady pace. Quickly get to the start of the module to begin picking, especially coming back from breaks or lunch. Toad on time and work safely. When we provide the stores, our customers, with the right merchandise and do it with production in mind, we help reduce the overall cost to sell that product while improving company profit. You can help by understanding the role you play by achieving your REs, staying engaged during our meetings to hear their directions each day. I agree. Those are the things we should focus on. ACD, function codes 761 and 762. Let's check out ACD. This area has a huge impact on tote times. Yes, at least 35% of our conveyable volume comes from the ACD lines. If we don't meet our planned goals in this area, we're going to be late on tote times. Let's observe Carmen. She's been with the company for 11 years. Match the door to the trailer assignment sheet to confirm you're picking the right batch and trailer. A supervisor resets the carton counters before unloading begins, so we can track how many cartons are sent through the conveyor. Then the associate opens the dock door, engages the trailer locks, and verifies the safety light has gone to green. And if all is good, sets the dock plate and then moves the dock light into the trailer. Absolutely never enter a trailer that does not have a green light. Once the dock doors are open, the associate confirms that the trailer number matches the trailer assignment sheet. Pull one carton, confirm the batch number for the portion of the load. So the associate positions the conveyor about one to two feet from the carton wall and then starts to unload? Yes, making sure there's room to be efficient in how they handle the cartons. Associates should use the step stool when cartons are out of reach. Plus, this allows you to work safely. Wow, this associate is quick. She keeps moving from top to bottom, left to right, one wall at a time. Yeah, and she continues matching the batch number and cartons labels as she goes. Carmen just encountered a carton that won't convey on our conveyor. She places all non-con cartons on the outside of the trailer. And prior to the end of batch, she'll notify the supervisor for disposition. So when she finishes a wall, she starts another in the same pattern and keeps moving the extendable conveyor into the trailer. Like Carmen, less steps are better. We're working smarter, not harder. If she encounters damaged cartons, but the product is okay, she tapes it and continues. If there is severe carton damage, place the carton in a designated area and notify the supervisor. At the end, she moves the extendable conveyor back onto the dock, cleans and closes the trailer. She completes the pro rep card with case counts from the ASN. This information is available on the trailer assignment sheet. She then proceeds to her next assignment. The keys to ACD are place the carton on the center of the belt to prevent jams, place cartons with labels facing up so they can be read by the scanner, make sure the cartons being placed are for the correct batch, maintain a steady pace, place the toad immediately after the last thrown carton for the batch, Transfer multiple cartons when possible, towed on time, know how to handle jams or other conveyor issues. So what I hear you saying is the things an associate should focus on are... Follow all safety guidelines. That includes lifting, conveyor, dock and trailer safety, proper use of the step stool for out-of-reach cartons, and quality is important too for our customers. Making sure we don't order fill damaged cartons or damage freight as it comes into the building. If we damage or deface product, we negatively impact our bottom line. Our customers need us to deliver on time exactly what they order. Productivity? Maintain a steady pace. Minimize carton touches by handling freight only once. You can help realize positive results by achieving your REs, being engaged during startup meetings, and following the daily plan. Well put. I agree. Those are the things we should focus on. Case Pack Offline Pick and Load, Function Code 34. Function Code 34 is used for picking full case store orders from the floor or pallet rack locations in Case Pack modules using a tugger and cart. 
Before the associate can start to pick, he must complete the equipment checklist. And then he can attach either one or two carts to the tugger, depending on how many cartons he will be picking. Just check the number of carton labels to figure it out. With tugger and cart, the associate travels to the first pick location. I notice he positions the tugger and cart to within one step of the pick location and sets the parking brake. Then he verifies that the location and division item number on the carton match the label, so he has the correct product. Next, he labels and places the cartons on the cart. Label handling. Label one case at a time. Avoid folds, wrinkles, tears, and label. No label overhang. Avoid placement on seams of case. Avoid label placement on key selling presentation or information. If the carton is dusty, dust before applying the label. Pick cases by layer, front to back, do not column pick. Correct label placement will ensure the carton diverts properly in shipping and that the store is properly charged. Any issues with poor labeling will result in additional handling for shipping. Here Andres has come across the damaged carton. He checked to be sure the product wasn't damaged before he tapes the carton. Repaired cartons should always ship first. What happens if the product is damaged? In that case, Andres will place the damaged product in a designated area and contact the supervisor at the end of the batch for disposition. Clean as you go and throw away the broken wood and stretch wrap in the trash bag. When the cart is full and all the labels have been picked, drive to the induction location. He positions the cart within two steps of the induction point and following safety guidelines, sets the parking brake, gets off and places the label cartons on the belt. Here are some keys to carton handling. Orient cases long and low on the takeaway belt. Place with care to avoid package or concealed damage. Retain the label backings and place in designated area. Transfer multiple cases whenever possible. Once the cart is empty, Andres returns to the label sign-out area and drops off empty label backings. If he has any hang-up labels, he places them in a designated area. Then he's off to his next assignment. I see he has finished his pro rep card, making sure the number he uses is based on what was on the bundle header, subtracting any leftover hangups. I think the keys to offline pick and load are follow the conveyor safety training guidelines. Keep the supervisor and RSR driver aware of any hangups as soon as possible. Follow the safe lifting guidelines. Make sure the equipment is in good condition when it goes out and when you bring it back. Keep up on your pro rep card with the correct carton counts to get credit for your work. Understand the e-stop system, towed on time. So if we had to list it out, what are the things an associate should focus on? Work safely on equipment so we don't harm ourselves or others in the DC through reckless driving or damage to property. Practice safe lifting techniques. Know the possible pinch points on belts. And quality is important for our customers too. Make sure we don't order fill damaged cartons. If we damage or deface product, we negatively impact our bottom line. Our customers need us to deliver on time exactly what they order. Productivity. Maintain a steady pace. Minimize carton touches. You can help realize positive results by achieving your REs. Be engaged during startup meetings and follow the daily plan. Agreed. Those are definitely the things we should focus on. Case pad, offline pick and load with clamp. Function code 534. Function code 534 is used for picking full case door orders from the floor or trailer locations with the clamp truck. Before the associate can start to pick, the equipment checklist must be completed. So in this function code, an associate gets a bundle of labels. Using a clamp truck, he makes multiple trips to stage the freight at an induction location. When an associate has picked all the freight, he parks his clamp truck at the staging area. At this time, he labels the freight and loads it on the conveyor. We can catch this associate as he completes his pick assignment. So I see Andres checks the pick ticket and goes to the correct location and clamps the cartons. Off he goes back to the staging area to drop off, and he continues picking. There's a lot of freight there, so he must be close to the end of the pick assignment. Throughout the process, he continues to verify location and product. He picks the optimum clamp load. Being efficient, he moves from one location to another, adding to his clamp. He takes the most direct route to the staging location. If there are any hang-ups, notify the manager or supervisor as soon as possible, while there's still an opportunity to get the cartons on the belt before end of batch. 
and once all the freight is staged, he gets down off his clamp truck and inspects the cartons for damage. As he begins the labeling process, he notices a damaged carton. He tapes the carton and continues to label the freight. Repair cartons should always ship first. What happens if the product is damaged? In that case, Andres places the damaged product in the designated area and contacts the supervisor at the end of the batch for disposition. He follows the loading rules like we do for all conveyable product, including to make sure the label is legible, not flip carton so the label is hidden, and not label on the seam. Place the tote on the belt immediately following the last carton for the batch. Tips on carton handling. Orient the case long and low on the takeaway belt. Place with care to avoid package or concealed damage. Retain label backings and place them in the designated area. Pick top to bottom. Keys to label handling. If the carton is dusty, dust before applying label. Label one case at a time. Avoid folds, wrinkles, tears in labels. No label overhang. Avoid placement on seams of case. Avoid label placement on key selling presentation or information. Correct label placement will ensure that the carton diverts properly in shipping and that the store is properly charged. Any issues with poor labeling will result in additional handling for shipping. Once everything is loaded for the batch, return to the label sign-out area to pick up the next batch assignment. Update the Pro Rep card, making sure to keep track of the cartons picked and loaded on the belt. The keys to offline pick and load with clamp are follow the conveyor safety training guidelines. Keep the supervisor aware of any hang-ups as soon as possible. Follow the safe lifting techniques. Ensure the equipment is in good condition when it goes out and when you bring it back. Keep up on your ProRep card with the carton counts, getting credit for your work. Understand the e-stop system, tote on time. Stay on equipment during picking and take the most direct route when traveling between locations. So in a nutshell, the things an associate should focus on are Work safely on equipment, don't harm ourselves or others in the DC through reckless driving or damage to property. Practice safe lifting techniques. Know the possible pinch points on belts and clean as you go. And quality is important for our customers too. Don't order fill damaged cartons. If we damage or deface product, we negatively impact our bottom line. Our customers need us to deliver on time exactly what they order. Productivity, maintain a steady pace. Minimize carton touches. You can help realize positive results by achieving your REs being engaged during startup meetings, and following the daily plan. Those are all great things we should focus on. Repack Replenishment Driver, Function Code 39. Let's watch Isa, a replenishment driver who only services the repack area. Start by completing the Pro Rep card. After getting all his tools like tape, safety knife, harness, pick hook, and calculator, he completes the equipment inspection sheet. And we make sure we follow all safety rules for equipment. So a safety harness and safety handrail are required. Log into the VRC screen to get the first location for the cartons to the pick. Wow! He goes up and over to the location very quickly. He verifies the location and pick quantity and matches the division and item number to the VRC. I see he inspects the carton for damage and repairs as needed. As he picks, the VRC displays the total number of pieces to get from the location. He would open the carton if he can't determine the number of picks in the carton. He always carries the safety knife. Keep moving and pulling cartons, staging them on the platform, and mark the prime location on the carton. This assists it going to the right backstock location. Sorting the cartons is important to make a more streamlined run to the backstock area. I notice he uses a pick hook for cartons at the back of the pallet. Yes, and for safety reasons, you should never leave the platform while elevated. And he picks the carton by level, not column. That's so the pallet is balanced, keeping cartons from falling and preventing damage. And after each pick, he confirms the cartons used in the VRC and moves the cartons to the platform. A key to this is to maximize space by getting as many cartons as possible on the platform. So once done, travel back to the backstock location following the carton arrangements. And drop it off in the correct backstock location and move to the next drop-off. Once complete, call the supervisor and find out if there is another assignment. And when done, return the equipment and supplies to the designated area for the next day. At the end of the assignment, the associate will complete the pro-rep card 
with the total number of cartons replenished and stop time. The keys to repack replenishment are sign out equipment and complete the equipment checklist, clean as you go, make the prime location number visible to the stalker, stack similar items separately from one another, all items stacked neatly with the stalker in mind. So all in all, the things an associate should focus on are safety by following the safe lifting guidelines preventing accidents or injuries. Be careful with equipment so that you are aware of your surroundings above and below. Always use proper personal protective equipment or PPE. And quality is important for our customers. Make sure the right cartons are picked. If merchandise in the reserve doesn't match, advise management. We must fill orders correctly and timely. Productivity, make sure that cartons are dropped off as close to the selection location as possible and make sure to drive equipment at a steady pace. For sure, those are things we should focus on. Repack, stalker, cutter, function code 43. So the next part of repack is the stalker cutter who moves the cartons from the back stock location to the prime location. Let's watch Bill, who has many years of experience. He starts by gathering his supplies, including safety glove, rubber stamp, safety knife, tape, pen, and trash cart. After the startup meeting, he goes to his assigned back stock area and starts to cut open the cartons and place them in the prime location. As he works, he is responsible for checking the prime location to be sure he doesn't cut open a box before there's room. I see he has labels on the racking. Yes, this helps him identify the type of cut to use before he places the carton in the slot. We use different cuts for different box heights. And for small light boxes, we transfer the contents to a tote, making it easier for the merchandise to roll down to the prime. He stamps the cartons too. This is how we know who cut the carton and placed it in the prime location. He's careful not to get too far ahead. Once he stamps a carton, he is responsible for getting it to the correct prime location. Everyone wants to get credit for the cartons they process, so keep a tally stroke of cartons processed, then update the ProRep cart. Be ready to respond to any call out from an order filler on the other side. If an order filler needs an empty slot filled, that's a priority. And when the trash cart is full and at the end of the day, dispose of the trash in the designated location. Once the stocking is complete, mark the ProRep card with the count of cartons filled and check with the supervisor for the next assignment. If no more work, return the supplies. The keys for repack stocking are verify location and product match the carton. Ensure prime location has space available to hold the carton. Cut the cartons open based on the guidelines. Remember to always use cut motions directed away from your body. Stamp the carton with your stamp. Respond to picker callouts. Keep up on your pro rep card with all the carton counts. Getting credit for your work. Keep a steady pace and clean as you go. So if we had to headline it, the things an associate should focus on are Working safely by following the safe lifting and cutting guidelines. And quality. Make sure to place the proper product into the correct prime locations so that the order fillers pick the correct orders for our customers. Productivity. Keep up a steady pace and clean as you go making sure you use the cutting guidelines for proper product presentation. I agree. Those are the highlights. Hi, Linda. Thanks for coming today to communicate your expert knowledge of the order filling process. I'm sure your years of experience will be really useful to the Work Methods Initiative. Yes, this is exciting, getting a chance to share what I know. Well, let's not waste any time. Let's get started. Repack online pick function codes 610 through 640. So the next part of repack is order filling process. Let's watch Tonya, who has many years of experience. She gets her supplies, including tape, safety knife, pen, and also her printer. She carries around a printer to print out tote labels. Always carry an extra roll of labels with you. Then she logs into the entry port with her ID, printer number, and section numbers. She grabs an empty box. Boxes are available throughout the module. Walking to the flashing light, she verifies the quantity on a display panel. 
She is accountable for picking the right location, quantity, and product every time. And once she finishes picking the location, she presses the gray button. The system assumes she has completed the picks for that location. So how does she know how many picks to grab? The display, in this case, one by five means you have one pick of five inner pieces. What about wrong merchandise in the slot? If that happens, pull the merchandise out of the slot to prevent mistakes and contact the supervisor as soon as possible. What about an empty location? You call out to the stocker in the back stock area and they can handle it on their end immediately. But? Sometimes there isn't anyone available, so you walk around and see if you can fill the location. So what happens if the slot is empty and there isn't enough product? And there isn't any product on the back stock? Then the picker needs to print the shipping label for that piece, write hang up on the label, and notify the supervisor or label control associate immediately. I see pick hooks. Sometimes we need to pull cartons forward when they're light or if cartons jam in the lane. And Tanya is taping up a package. If the packing is slightly torn but the product isn't damaged, just tape and go. What happens if the product is damaged? In that case, Tanya places the damaged product in the designated area and contacts the supervisor at the end of the batch for disposition. We never want to ship damaged product to our stores. If she runs out of room and the tote is full, she must hit full print, adjust quantity for what was picked, and hit done button twice. This will print the shipping label. Hitting the done button the third time allows you to continue picking. So when we've completed the picks for the store, the data entry port displays the store number and the word done and prints a shipping label. Like all the other picking, you apply the label following the label placement guidelines, right? Yes, and if the order is for a customer, we also place a yellow customer goods label on the carton. Then the associate loads the box on the conveyor, following the conveyor loading and safety guidelines. So once she finishes the current batch, what happens next? Unless told otherwise, the associate begins picking the next batch. It's important not to get too far ahead of the other pickers, so you might be asked to log off and log back into another section to help complete the current batch. I see at the end of the day, the associate returns to the label control desk and returns her printer. Yes, and once the printers are returned, confirm the batteries are placed in the chargers to be ready for the next morning. At the end of the assignment, the associate completes the ProRep card with the total number of picks and the stop time. I think the keys for repack picking are place cartons with labels facing up so they can be read by the scanner. Make sure the cartons being placed are for the correct batch. Keep up a steady pace. When we see merchandise in the wrong location, quickly fix it so we can correctly fill customer orders towed on time. So if we had to list it out, the things an associate should focus on are... Work safely by following lifting and conveyor safety guidelines. That's very important. Use your pick hook, clean as you go, to avoid slip and trip hazards. Report all unsafe conditions to management. And quality is important, too, for our customers. Fill rate is an important measurement for quality, so we want to make sure we fill the cartons accurately and do everything possible to handle the hangoffs before the end of batch so we get all the picks to our customers. If we damage or deface product, we impact our bottom line. Productivity? Keep up a steady pace. Focus on the lights and getting the right picks for each location. I agree. Those are things we should focus on.